Justin, and I'm here to continue our do-it-yourself message. My message is on hoarders, and uh, that'll be pretty relevant by the end of my message. Uh, and my <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, James 5, 1 through 6, that's my passage. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted, and your garments are moth -eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded. Their corrosion will be evidence against you, and it will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasures in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on this earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in a day bless you, of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. That's a passage right there. When I picked this one by accident, honestly, I, I was like, what did I just do? And then when I studied on this, I continued to say, what did I just do? But then I submitted, guys. I really submitted. I realized that. Uh, uh, you know, before I begin, that this message is uneasy. Um, but all must understand this message, all of us. Before we became Christians, we all had to understand this message I'm about to say. And that's that each of us is broken, and we are condemned to judgment and hell. End of message. <laughs> that's, that's it. No, that's the end. That's what we need to understand before we can move forward in our life. I mean, that must sink in. Because that's reality. And without understanding that, there is no happy message. There is no glorious message. Because without understanding our need for Jesus, we don't have a need for Jesus. So without understanding our brokenness, then, you know, we need that. That's where our conviction comes from. That's where Jesus steps in and he can be a part of our lives. Uh, I just want to pray. I want to pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I pray for a deep understanding of our sin that we can understand the death penalty that we were under and therefore our need for you, Jesus. And we can rejoice in that, Lord. We can just rejoice in that, knowing uh, that you're there for us because we need you. All right. Amen. Um, hoarders. This is quite fitting. Has anyone seen the show before? Yes. I had to look it up. It, uh, it's <laughs> something else. Uh, these people literally hoard crazy stuff, and that's what it is, stuff. Uh, this message, that I, this uh, passage I just read, it refers to the rich. Now, who are the rich? What does that mean? Uh, Alan's passage before uh, James uh, 4, 13 through 17, tells us uh, that these people were people that were just, it's not that they were rich, but they were living for worldly gain. Um, that's what they were doing, it's their, their priorities. Alan really hit on, it was all about their priorities. Uh, second, uh, the original context in verse 4 here uh, tells us, uh, gives us a specific example. Uh, first century Palestine, sometime before AD 70, you know, there's a few rich landlords that this was talking about. Um, and the farmers uh, that it's talking about, they had to hire themselves out to these landlords because uh, they were too poor. Um, so they had to hire themselves out to the rich because they had the land. So James 5.1 says, come now, and I underline now, so that means it's important. Come now, you rich. Weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. And, and why I underline now is because now means it's too late. Come now, he says. Reap, weep and howl now. They're going to do that right now. Uh, it's too late. Sidestep a minute. Back in my late teenage years, uh, I call those my BC days before Christ, um, my mom and my dad always warned me about uh, how to drive, you know, for some reason that was a big fear. They just were scared about me getting behind the wheel of the car, probably rightfully so. Um, and they always said, don't speed, don't speed, yeah, don't speed. And there's two of me, because I'm an identical twin, so I just say it all the time to both of us. Um, and I was a computer student at Four Cs, that's Cape Cod Community College. And, uh, and I woke up one Monday, and it was late. I was running late, it was cold because it's Massachusetts, and that's what it's like in Massachusetts. And uh, so I was running late. So I get in my car, and um, you know, for some reason there was like nobody on the road, and I'm like, 
all right, cool. I'm gonna speed. <laughs> so I started speeding, and I was making really good time. And I'm like, sweet, I'm making really good time. You know, I, of course I thought, you know, it's not good to speed. Um, and then out of the corner of my eye, I saw a police car. It's like, uh-oh. Uh, the lights came on, boom. Um, and then I thought, mom said don't speed. <laughs> oh. First thing I thought, mom said don't speed. And I heard her when she said it. I thought about it when I, when I drove, and I ignored it, because I had my own priorities. But now, once I saw those lights, it was too late. Um, time was for punishment. So I got a ticket. <laughs> and it's short. It's expensive, and I was a college kid. Uh, verse 1 of James says, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are upon you. Uh, Alan, Alan told us uh, these people have received their message. They have received their warning already. Uh, my, my, verse, my passage is like part two of Alan's, because they already received their, their uh, warning in Alan's. Um, and now my passage is, is you know, the, 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 the rich who didn't listen. Um, they ignored their warning. Every day, people run out of time. You know, they keep living for themselves, ignoring God, ignoring others. Uh, it said, the rich did not listen. They kept boasting in their arrogance. They kept living for themselves, ignoring God in their lives. Now, like the red and blue flashing lights, the misery is upon them. Like any crime, there is a punishment. You do the pun you do the crime, you pay the time. But all types of crime, all types of punishment are forgivable. Nothing too bad that Jesus can't save you from. However, uh, nobody's sins will be forgiven without accepting Jesus. Uh, and you know, this is this is the people that's talking to the ones who just lived their lives, not just because they had money, uh, because that was their priority, and, uh, and not Jesus. Um, Verse 2, uh, we're being given a picture of reality. Um, it talks about, you know, garments of moth eaten and your gold and silver have corroded and their corrosion will be evident against you. Um, you know, where does gold corrode? Gold's really expensive because it doesn't corrode. So it's like, that doesn't make sense. But that's because gold doesn't corrode here, but it does corrode somewhere. Second uh, Peter 3.10 tells us, but the day the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat. Elements, like gold. And the earth and its works will be burned up. This corrosion is talking about judgment. Uh, so for the rich, it's talking about those, uh, those rich who are at judgment. The end is near for all of us. You know, that message is what, you know, all the prophets always said in Jesus. The end is near. The end is near. The end is near. The message doesn't change. Uh, because we're all going to die, we don't know when that is. And could be near. It's near for us all, in, in, in our relation to, you know, to life. Uh, Revelation three, seventeen through eighteen says, "For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, I need nothing. I realize that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy gold from me, refined by fire, that you may be rich in white garments." so that you may clothe yourself, and the shame of your naked, nakedness may not be seen. That's a message from God. You know, it's talking about gold that is refined by fire. Uh, one type of gold that we've heard about already has no worth. Um, and the other type is refined, and it will make you rich. In, you know, side step again, in, in, in the world we live in, there's also two types of gold. There's regular gold, as it's worth a lot of money. Um, and then there's fool's gold. I don't know if anybody's ever hold of, heard of fool's gold. It's called pyrite. It's an element. It looks like gold. Um, it feels like gold. I don't know if it smells like gold, but it, uh, <laughs> it's called fool's gold because it's not gold. And it's not worth anything. Uh, because you can't make it into jewelry. You can't really do anything with it. It's pretty much worthless. Uh, so if you move your family across the country to, to mine for gold and it ends up being fool's gold, well, you're out of luck. Uh, back, to the, back to the verses. Uh, the warning from James 5 is telling the rich that even though they think they are rich, they're actually poor. Time on earth is over and judgment comes. That gold uh, burns up. It's fool's gold. If you invest your life into these worldly things, uh, you'll wind up with nothing. You know, that's the crazy thing about these hoarders, you know. These hoarders in this show that, that I watched a very little bit about, uh, they're hoarding this stuff, but it's all junk, but to them it's like gold. And I feel like that's the way, you know, the kingdom is looking at, you know, people in this world that, that worship these 
things that have value here, but they're like, what are you doing? Those things have zero value eternally. You're, you're rotting, your things are corroding, you're missing the point, and you're gonna, you're gonna be like, you're gonna be without anything for eternity. Um, so they're looking at, at, at those people like they're hoarders, like that's fool's gold. So you know, what are we hoarding? Are we hoarding fool's gold? That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Verse four, behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You know, and, and, and the misery is coming upon the rich uh, should spoil their enjoyment, but they're just not seeing it. It's full of gold. Uh -huh. Verse 5 talks about the slaughter. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough word. And the Greek word means uh, sheep unknowingly destined for slaughter. Like, that's what that word means. So it's, uh, it's just brings with it you know, a sense of urgency. You know, another image we can think of um, is Lazarus. You know, the story of Lazarus or in the, you know, the rich man. Um, you know, that's kind of like what happens after my verse, as you'll see. You know, we know, we know Lazarus, uh, you know, is a poor man. And then there was the rich man who just lived for himself and didn't help Lazarus at all. And then we see how, you know, at least is the greatest when judgment comes. And, you know, Lazarus uh, is reclining and now he's in glory. Now he's the rich one. Um, and we see how, how opposite the world we live in can be. Uh, verse 6. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. This just takes it a step further, just saying, you know, that, you know, this can get to a really bad extent. The rich people can use, um, you know, courts and whatever whatever they can because they have, they have high esteem in this world, uh, which they could do great things with, but, but uh, a lot of them... Um, use that to put people who are already down low even further down low. This message is speaking to those who chose a path away from God. Uh, their time is up. No hope left. Uh, other people living today uh, for themselves are chasing fool's gold. Most of my life I did not know Jesus and all I knew was living for myself. Uh, to try to figure out like what that looked like, you know, have you ever been in a room with no lights, you know? But you got to get to the other side of the room, right? Okay, so you like walking around, you're like touching stuff, you don't want to like bump into anything, but then you do, and then you bump into something else, and then you kind of like follow the wall until you get there and you hit the light switch. And then you turn around, and you're like, oh, the path was right there. Like I remember that, and, duh, you know. That was my life without Jesus. Lights, once the light's on, it's like, bam, there it is. What was I thinking my whole life? Looking back, it's so easy. They say hindsight's 2020. That's what I felt like. Hindsight's 2020 when I found Jesus. Should have seen that, should have known it. Took me a little longer than most people. But um, either way, you know, I praise God, you know, for what I had to go through that led me to Him. Um, but Jesus is that light. And He's that light, light switch that we have. And we can still turn that light switch on. We already have that light in our lives, but we need to shine that light onto other people. We need to show them what are they looking at. Are they looking at fool's gold? Are they are they hoarding things of this world and missing the point? Shine that light, that light. You know, anybody, any jeweler or any professional can hold up gold and fool's gold and tell you the difference. Well, the same goes with us. We have a light that we can shine on that fool's gold, and we can tell you. We throw it up against. We can throw it up against scripture. Or anything. If we're sound in our foundation, we can tell the difference. Okay, and we need to shine that light. We have a responsibility, guys. We have a responsibility to do that. It's not just about us. It's about, like Alan said, making disciples, and it's about shining that light and making that light that path clear for others. So we've already bumped into things, but let's show them, you know, where those obstacles are, where they can avoid. Let's show them where Jesus is, guys. I'm just gonna close on this. Colossians 3.3 says, "Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord." not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive an inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.